Welcome to Thomson Reuters Tech Connect, a series where we explore the depths of AI and innovation through the lens of various industry leaders. You can expect thought-provoking conversations and a candid, behind-the-scenes look into the strides Thomson Reuters is making within the tech space. This is Thomson Reuters Tech Connect. Hi everyone, welcome back to our Tech Connect series, where we bring diverse and dynamic perspectives from all corners of the technology world through thought-provoking questions and conversation. Today, I'm joined by Laura Safdie from our co-counsel team to chat about how AI is changing the practice of law. Laura, welcome, and why don't you help us kick things off? Thanks, David. Happy to be here. I'm excited to chat with you today. Um, at this point, it's pretty well understood that recent breakthroughs in AI are going to lead to massive transformation in the practice of law. But it's going to be a journey, and we're still in the early days. So David, to start, can you help us level set by giving us a bit of perspective into what we're hearing from peers and customers about how AI has already become embedded in the day-to-day -day work of legal professionals? Yeah, it's a good question. And in many ways, AI has been used by legal professionals for years, if not decades. If you think back to uh, some of the work that Thomson Reuters has done, we've incorporated machine learning and AI into our research systems and into document preparation systems for probably 20, if not 30 years, starting with natural language search and Westlaw back in the 1990s. But what's really new now is, of course, the change with generative AI. And we've all read different reports, different studies, which have said that legal is among the industries which is the most impacted and has the most upside with the application of generative AI. And so, you know, what we've, what we've heard from our peers and our customers uh, is uh, two big things. Number one is that they see the same opportunity. They see the benefit to the practice of law, efficiencies, better accuracy, and potentially even more creativity from the application of generative AI to things like research, to drafting, to analysis of legal issues. And they also want help, that customers see an incredible diversity of solutions out there. It seems like every day there's a new startup, there's a new demo, there's a new company that is trying something in the space, and they need support and help to figure out what to do next, how to explore, how to test, and, you know, Thomson Reuters, we've been here to help to be able to navigate the space uh, for ourselves and for our customers uh, because of all that change. Now, you know, back to you, Laura, with your legal background, because you used to be general counsel of, uh, of, of Case Text, uh, you know, the, the company that created CoCounsel, what, what are some of the biggest step changes you've observed from the beginning of your career to today in terms of technology, AI, and other solutions that have helped you to augment your work? Yeah, it's a really good question. And everything you've observed from clients in the market is very analogous to what we've seen operating in this space also. Not, not nearly as long as Thomson Reuters, but for the, for the last few years. Um, my personal legal career began really in the shadow of the 2008 financial crisis. And we saw then that clients were asking their law firms to do more with less and that law firm leaders were figuring out how exactly to innovate in response. At the same time, the amount of valuable data that lawyers have access to just exploded, both in size and complexity. So I think we saw over the last 15 years or so an emphasis on tools that allow law firms and legal departments to make better use of the knowledge and work product that they already had. So practice management solutions, CLM and document automation, more advanced e-discovery tools, breakthroughs in legal search, as you're well aware of. Um, but the technology of today, to your point about generative AI and the recent breakthroughs, can suddenly do significantly more than we could ever have expected technology in the past to do. And clients are increasingly aware of that fact. So the need to provide better guidance faster and for better value has just never been more acute. We're seeing that everywhere. So for the first time in my career, at least, I'm seeing kind of a broad recognition that even the most successful seasoned lawyers are going to need to evolve and adapt to succeed in the future of legal practice. And speaking of those new innovative technologies, we are hot off the heels of having announced expanded capabilities in co-counsel, um, which is an AI legal assistant, as you know, that you can delegate substantive legal tasks to. Um, for those listeners who aren't familiar, co-counsel provides a really broad range of functionalities that are critical to legal work, finding insights from large document sets, automatically redlining contracts, 
creating timelines, many, many more, um, all powered by generative AI and all accessed through just simply chatting, a uh, really new way of interacting with technology. It allows legal professionals to produce higher quality work uh, much more quickly while keeping customer data secure. But, you know, David, we've been getting this feedback since we launched CoCounsel that it's really a game changer for lawyers. Um, and I just was curious if you could share, um, you know, what you've been hearing from customers so far. Yeah. And, and, you know, what I'll share is just a fraction of the feedback that we're getting from our customers. I've had the privilege to spend time with our customers across the world around our plans for co-counsel uh, and for our plans for incorporating gener generative AI into our products. And number one, uh, very exciting. Uh, customers are excited. They love the fact that we are combining the technology, the capabilities of co-counsel, which uh, again, the Case Text team created over the past couple of years in partnership with OpenAI using GPT-4 with the content and knowledge and expertise of Thomson Reuters. And that's, that's really been sort of at the crux of uh, the excitement for our customers. They see this opportunity to fully take advantage of the assets and the knowledge and the capabilities that Thomson Reuters has with this technology. And so it really is a better together story. We're, from, we're hearing from our customers. Yeah, as you know, we actually wanted to join Thomson Reuters because I think the magnitude of this vision, the ability to do more by bringing together just immense value across the whole legal workflow was just super compelling to us. So it's something, it's a reason that we're very excited to be here. Yeah, and it's one of the reasons why you know, it was it was uh, a relationship and a, and it ultimately, you know, a, a marriage of companies that worked out. So we're really excited by it, too. Um, and, you know, when it comes to the usage of the product and the adoption of the product, you know, we're learning a lot every single day. Uh, Co-counsel has skills which uh, span research all the way to document analysis and document preparation and drafting. And those are very different workflows and the the way you incorporate co-counsel into those workflows is different in those different cases so what we found is that engaging with customers and the role of our customer training our customer success as well as uh, just giving our customers you know the easy onboarding of how to get started is critically critically important We've absolutely found that. I will say that our customer success team is really focused on providing the tools and building blocks for our customers to develop not just um, awareness and competence about how to succeed with this product, but how do you evolve your practice in response to generative AI capabilities more broadly? So we're offering advanced AI prompting training for lawyers who've never touched generative AI in their lives. And they're telling us that they're coming out of that experience feeling much more comfortable, much less uncertain, much more confident going into kind of this next stage. And so it's a, it's an ongoing evolution, like you said, and we're uh, building that program in response to feedback every day, but it's been uh, really empowering and validating to see how this like deep engagement is really kind of paying off for our clients and their, their experience. Yeah, and it, it, it's also a very interesting time because uh, what we're hearing from our customers is they really wanna dream big and they see the potential and the upside for the usage of the technology, but they also need help to just get started. So we have this sort of interesting trade-off and duality of the work that's happening right now, which is let's talk about the possibility, but then let's get down to the practical, practical nuts and bolts. And I think the companies that do well in this space are gonna be those that can, can straddle both of those, 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 uh, those needs really well. Yeah, we've approached those conversations like a now, next, later, right? Like, what can we do today that can provide value today? And how do we build towards a future where you're enabling your lawyers and paralegals across kind of everything we do to be more effective for clients to respond quicker? And, and those kinds of conversations have been really interesting. Yeah. So let, let's, uh, let's switch gears a bit. Now, given that we're seeing this excitement, we're seeing AI and generative AI have this transformative impact within the marketplace, there's a lot more conversation around guardrails, a lot more conversations around how to do this safely, and also the rule, sorry, the role of regulations in this space. And so what are your thoughts, Laura, on what legal, pref legal professionals need to be cognizant of when they're considering data security and responsible usage of this technology? 
It's such a critical question. We could probably talk about this alone for several hours, but kind of the short answer is that I think the key to responsible use of AI for legal practice is aggressively auditing tools and partners for substantive reliability on one hand and data security and privacy on the other. And on both topics, it matters very much that you're using a reliable AI solution that is actually built for law with all the safeguards required for legal practice. So although it might not be obvious from kind of some of the, the broader coverage in newspapers, but AI is not a monolith. And there is a huge difference between consumer AI like ChatGPT and reliable legal AI like CoCounsel. CoCounsel uses GPT-4 to process information, which means it can take advantage of its unprecedented reasoning capabilities, but it uses only reliable and verifiable sources of data as its knowledge base, which is critical. It prevents it from generating output that is unreliable or otherwise just not suitable for professional use. That knowledge base is the actual law itself when you're using Westlaw Precision's AI-assisted research memo, or it's your firm's or your client's data, like a contract database, a litigation record, or a brief bank. And that allows co-counsel to do very substantive tasks that you would historically expect only a lawyer or a paralegal to be able to do, but at superhuman speeds, reliably, which is the critical piece. And it matters that from day one, we really built the solution with the most rigorous security and privacy controls in place so that among other things, your data is never gonna be used to train a third party large language model. Um, and we've made sure that across the entire workflow, your data is encrypted and secure. And just to point out, like we are attorneys, we understand how critical client confidentiality is, and we've built that into the DNA of how we build AI solutions for legal practice. And I know that's true across the entire product organization at Thomson Reuters. I guess I would kind of flip it back to you also, David, um, since you're getting that higher level view of the product landscape, the reality is that generative AI is very much here to stay. Um, so how do you ensure that we're thinking about mitigating risks um, from the conception and ideation stage of a product up to execution and launch? Yeah, again, I think this is a topic that we could spend, you know, hours on. It's probably not the most exciting topic for, for a podcast to just talk about, you know, compliance processes. But uh, it is a significant uh, investment and area of focus for Thomson Reuters. Uh, we have, as part of the development of our generative AI platform, which we've you know shared with the marketplace, a big part of that is uh, safety, uh, uh, compliance process, as well as uh, registry of all of our systems. And so, what we have within our platform is a documentation and a management layer, which allows every single use case we have for AI to go through rigorous compliance processes and documentation. So we're very clear around uh, the way that we're using the Gen AI technology, uh, the types of risks that might be produced by the use of that particular kind of, of, uh, of technology within our products, as well as mitigation strategies for how we uh, think about uh, helping to, again, uh, address potential problems with bias, risk, um, and confidentiality and privacy, and making sure that we address those upfront you say it's not the most exciting topic, but I will say it comes up in every single client conversation as it should, right? Because, yeah. you know, we view data security and privacy as just table stakes. And so I think it's critical that um, lawyers and law firms and legal departments are asking these questions. And I, I'm excited that I think the questions are getting more pointed and more focused on the things that really matter and that we've been building that in from the start. And so we're very well positioned to have those conversations in depth. That's right. And so, you know, from documentation and the compliance process, we also go into just the technical design. And that's where the generative AI platform also helps, where we have consistent ways of accessing as well as contracting with the different vendors like OpenAI, but others as well, uh, that provide us with AI technology. So that way we can have consistent ways of handling data, as well as making sure that we have uh, consistent approaches for maintaining client confidentiality at the at the system design level, uh, so that's not just based off of off of contractual contractual um, commitments, which of course we make. But we also make it so that the systems are designed to protect client conf confidentiality uh, in the way that data is exchanged, that's encrypted, uh, and that uh, we uh, we ensure that that is built into those systems. The the other thing which is really important for us right now around just risk is. Uh, to 
to apply a, a, a testable approach to the development of Gen AI. So uh, when, when Laura, you were talking about reliable AI, reliability is not just that it stays up, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time or that you can access it through the data bit, through, sorry, through, uh, through the web. Uh, it's also that it does the tasks you expect it to reliably. And so that's another important thing for us, which is we have worked with our editorial and our legal experts within TR to create robust testing data so that we can validate that the systems do what they say. And that is, that, that is no, no, no mean feat. Uh, it is, it is only companies that actually have, uh, the armies of lawyers that are not, that at their disposal that can do this. And we think it's critical to make sure that we can say a particular feature or a particular product is able to do the work um, that uh, that it claims to. Oh, the, the co-counsel trust and reliability team, I just saw in our first year had run over 600,000 tests. And it is an incredible team that we've expanded here at Thomson Reuters, which was just amazing to see the investment that TR was eager to make in that function. And it's just a, a really close partnership between our AI and machine learning engineers and really experienced lawyers who are building tests that are replicating true legal practice. What does it truly mean to use generative AI for legal? What are the kinds of questions we're asking? What are we expecting to see in the results? And it's just incredible to see how aggressively we're testing literally over a thousand tests every day. Um, so that's that's been wonderful and I think bodes very well for our ability to expand capabilities responsibly into the future. Well, I'm really happy to have this conversation with you, with you Laura. Um, it's been great talking to you. And I know, again, we could spend you know hours more talking about all the different totally. facets of this particular issue, but we'll have to come, come to a close today. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning into our conversation. We'll be, we'll be back soon with another episode of Tech Connect, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you.